All right, so we are recording now. Very good, again, welcome. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about um, who we are and introduce everybody on our team. And then we're gonna kick it off with Nicole Fisher from Harnett County. She's gonna share with us um, their story. I'll ask her a few questions. And then um, we're just gonna open it up for discussion. If you have any questions from Nicole specifically, or if you have, um, you have something to share about how your district is using this particular product from Inventum um, with your MTSS program. Um, then we might we might talk about what's new and where to find us next. Um, I feel like um, we're going to be busy this fall starting um, next week and on and you're going to find us in many different locations. And we're going to share with you where we're going to be. All right. So just briefly, who we are, you may see different ones of us on the call, but Sabrina and John Robert, they are um, mainly cover, I guess, Western South Carolina, Middle North Carolina. It may be kind of mixed up in there. Um, Emily and Eddie are also in North Carolina based out of Eastern North, South, I mean, South Carolina. They're based out of Eastern South Carolina, but um, again, they cover all over South Carolina. And then um, Candace Rice and myself, we cover Eastern North Carolina and Dee and Jamie are in the West of North Carolina. So that's our team. You may see various ones of us on today um, and they may speak. So who we are at Admentum, um, you are here because you are an Admentum customer. We do a lot at Admentum and this is just a brief overview. We have assessments for learning, we have digital curriculum K-12, and we also have instructional services. If you need us to help you instruct your students, whether it's um, teaching, um, special ed, whatever, we can help you with that as well. So that's a little bit about who we are. Here are all our programs. These are all the possible programs that any one of you could have on the call. Um, specifically, Nicole is gonna share with you about, it. they have Exact Path, they have Study Island, and they have our courseware. And um, she will share with you a little bit about how they use those in their MTSS program. And um, then we also, as you know, have acquired Apex Learning, their courses and their tutorials. And we have added to that. Um, and just so you know, that marriage is going beautifully. We are excited about all that we are able to expand our offerings at Inventum with um, Apex being added to our family. And then we also have Reading Eggs, Base Education, Ed Options Academy, which is those instructional services if you need our teachers or help with SPED. Um, then we also have um, FEV2 and we have a great partnership with them as well. So enough about us. What I would um, like to do next Oh, we won't go to that slide yet. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and I am going to um, turn it over to Nicole Fisher. Nicole Fisher, um, a couple years ago, partnered with us and began building their MTSS program from the ground up for high school. They had nothing. And I'm sure as many of you um, can attest is that we do MTSS really well in K-5. We probably do it okay in middle school, but then come to high school, we're writing the book. And so um, Nicole has studied and she has um, developed a program in Harnett County from the ground up um, for her high school students. And um, now this year she decided that she missed those kiddos so much. She was at the district office that she um, decided on her own to go back over to um, Harnett Central High School where she's based now and, and really go back to working with those kids to make sure that what she has implemented for the rest of the district is actually working. So Nicole, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Um, feel free to share if you have a couple of slides that you wanna share with us, but um, just start out, we would love for you just to share with us, um, just talk a little bit about your implementation, if you wouldn't mind. Gotta unmute yourself, sorry. I do have a couple of slides and okay. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to share because I was planning on using my desktop and you know how technology works. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull it up to share, but I'll just I'll talk slow and I'll take it like point by point in case people want to take notes because I don't see an option for me to click on my um, different tabs okay. that I have open. But anyway, so. We have, with the products that Nicole was telling you that Hornet County's purchased with Edmonton. So we've got Exact Path, Study Island, Courseware, 
And we, we also have Edmentum assessments, which are um, part of, I think they're not through courseware, but it's, it's like a fixed form assessment that certain like EOC classes and ACT, SAT and stuff. So having that um, range of products, I wanted to look at a way that we could implement things to meet individual students' needs because personalized learning for a high school student is really important if you're gonna get them to buy in and take ownership in what we want them to work on. So in a high school, I kind of look at our kids in two groups. We have our ninth and 10th graders who um, have very different needs than our 11th and 12th graders. So I'll start talking about what we do with our ninth and 10th graders first. Um, we have all of our ninth and 10th graders take the exact path diagnostics in math and reading. And this year, we're gonna have them take it three times. So they'll have a beginning of the year, a middle of the year, and an end of the year diagnostic score that we can use as one of our data points in looking at how our students have grown in those basic skill areas. So we have our ninth and 10th graders completing those diagnostics. And then once they finish those diagnostics, there's two paths they could possibly take. Um, the first path would be those students that based on how they perform on their diagnostic and other historical data, we feel they would be most beneficial for them to work in their learning plan. So they will be reinforcing skill deficit areas from previous, you know, over previous math content. Same for reading. So the ones who score the lowest on the exact path diagnostic, again, we look at their historical data. So like how they did on EOG scores, class grades and so forth. And we get like our bottom, maybe about 10% is what we tried to handle this year of our um, ninth and 10th graders to work on reinforcing skills, working on their learning plan, which is developed automatically once they finish the exact path diagnostic. And then that's that group of children. And then the other group, we have our classroom teachers of our core subject areas. So math, science, English, and history. So those teachers have gone into power school and they pulled the class roster for the whole year for all of their classes. And they went into courseware and they created courses for all of their students. So if I'm, for example, I'm a 10th grader and I'm in math two, but I don't have it until the spring, my math two teacher has already first semester assigned me the Accelerate to Math 2 course in courseware so I can work on that prior to getting to my math course in the spring. And Does let's stop right there, um, okay. Nicole, that's great. Um, so those of you that are courseware customers, in our courseware, we have a course that's Accelerate to Math 1, Accelerate to math two. And what that is, is just a small, it's not a full course worth of content. It's just what is the main things that students are going to need practice on? Re, what do they need to review? What do they need to know to be successful in that math course, math two? So basically what they've done is taken those students who are going to have math two next semester, put them in this course, um, or in this, yeah, and it's just maybe, maybe eight weeks worth of content if they were to do it straight through, but they're not doing it straight through because tell them where are they, how are they doing this, Nicole? Like, when are they doing it in the school day? So we have a 30 minute block of time every day between our second period and our third period, and we call it advisory. So this is, um, it's like the old homeroom, 
but the way we do it in Harnett County, and I believe all four of our high schools are doing this, our students stay with the same advisory teacher all four years. Mm -hmm. So that relationship building piece is definitely there. So every day our students are going to advisory for 30 minutes. On Monday, that 30 minute chunk of time, they're working on their science course. So if I've got earth science this semester, my earth science teacher has assigned me earth science to do during this advisory time in courseware. On Tuesdays, all students in this whole school are working on math. On Thursdays, all students are working on English. And on Fridays, all students are working on history. And on Wednesdays, we have designated Wednesdays our advisory lesson day. So like we'll do social and emotional lessons using character strong twice a month. And then we'll do major clarity, which is that college and career readiness um, through that our CTE folks have helped us get. Um, and we have our students working on that two Fridays or two Wednesdays a month. So they do get like science, then they get it math, then they get their advisory lesson day, and then they get their um, English and then they get their history. So on Mondays, regardless of what grade you're in, you're working on your science. On Tuesdays, regardless of what grade you're in, you're working on math. And that from a consistency standpoint across the whole school is very helpful because if we do have some teachers that don't have advisories assigned to them for one reason or another. So if we have advisory teachers that are not at school that day, we've got folks that can come and step in and help provide that um, actively monitoring piece that we do with our students while they're working in courseware. And um, it's just very helpful because we're all on the same page. It's not one grade level doing something different than another. Um, and then it's personalized because it's based on the classes that that student is actually sitting in this school year, whether it's first semester or second semester, which is very helpful in terms of getting them to buy into the content that we're having them work on, whether they are previewing it because they don't have the class until the spring or they're reviewing it because they're going back over stuff that they've covered through the teacher-led instruction during their class time that particular semester. Does that make sense? Sure. So, and then where it gets just a tad bit different is our 11th graders and our 12th graders. So our 11th graders, they all have to take the ACT end of February, early March. So, because that's the state requirement. So our 11th graders have been assigned ACT prep courses through courseware that they're working on on those designated subject area days. So like on Mondays, they're doing ACT science prep. On Tuesdays, they're doing ACT math prep and, and so forth. Um, reading is done on Fridays with the history day. And then of course the English part is done on the English day. So that's how we handle our ACT prep. And our students have started with ACT prep like the first week of school, as soon as we could get the Chromebooks in their hands. Um, our seniors, because about three fourths of our senior class will have to take the work keys assessment at some point during the school year, we went ahead and assigned the work keys test prep also to all of our seniors, because not all seniors are going to be in a science class or a math class or a history class. They all have English, but they might not all have the other three subject areas. So what we did was give them the work keys prep to help with that. Um, we also have students who take the ASVAB. So we assign them ASVAB test prep so they can do that as well. 
So trying to target what the specific needs are for those students. So like I went to our JRTC instructors and I had them give me a list of student names of those who was gonna be taking the ASVAB. And then I create a course with all the different ASVAB prep pieces just for those students. In courseware, correct? In courseware, yes. And then um, the last thing that I wanna talk about is what we're getting ready to start doing with ACT prep. So we've been since like August the 29th through the early part of September, we've been working on ACT prep with all of our juniors in courseware. Starting next week, I am going to put them in the fixed form assessments. And then they're gonna spend 16 days working on ACT science. And then they'll spend another 16 days working on ACT math. Because through that, those fixed form assessments, I can assign a practice ACT science test to them They'll take those tests or that test. And then from there, they'll have a prescription identified for them through the program that will focus on areas that they need to work on based on how they did on that practice test. So, and we'll start doing that. Um, so we'll spend, uh, let the juniors for a couple of weeks work on science. And then a couple of weeks, they'll work on math. A couple of weeks, they'll work on English, couple of weeks they'll work on reading, and then we'll start doing some other seated, like face-to-face -face ACT prep as we get closer to that test date. Great. So just kind of a, trying to think of how each program is designed to work, where we get the most benefit for our students with the way those programs are designed to work, and then how would that work in the building with the way we do things here at Hornet Central? Mm -hmm. And those of you not familiar with fixed form, um, in our courseware, um, on that same platform, you will find exact path, you'll find um, flex assignments and those fixed form assessments. So it's all contained on one platform. So it's your teachers don't have to go back and forth between flat platforms. And so, um, Harnett County's done a great job of taking advantage of that one platform and everything it has to offer. Um, I wanna open it up. Um, any questions that you have for Nicole, just type them in the chat. Does anybody also on the call have anything that they would like to share about the district? Just type in the chat, yes, I, and raise your hand, say I would love to share um, an idea as well. Um, Thank you, Nicole. We we really appreciate your partnership. And I know you've worked hard to, to grow this from the ground up. Any um any idea? Have have you guys received any data or feedback or um, anything like that as you've implemented this program um, from either your teachers or your students or even seen numbers in growth in terms of um, just your your numbers overall? I know that our usage numbers are through the roof in courseware. Um, we have, we just started with this implementation plan in August, September when school started. So we haven't had the opportunity to see if what kind of results we're gonna get on like EOC tests and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely have a lot of students engaged, but it's like with anything else, um, there are those that we have to stay on top of. I will tell you that for my ninth and 10th graders that just struggled getting their diagnostics completed, um, they were just, you know, gazing around, getting distracted easily or whatnot. The, um, I created a list of all students that had not finished one or both of our ninth and 10th graders. We have an amazing administration staff here at Hornet Central, and all those students that had not finished were required to come to the cafeteria for two weeks during advisory time to finish with our administration actively monitoring them at that point. And it was, they were not allowed to do anything except sit on their Chromebooks and finish that diagnostic. And admin was walking around making sure they were on task the whole time. And it was amazing at how quickly they finished up their <laughs> diagnostics then. <laughs> I bet. I yeah. bet. 
Um, Loretta asked a great question. How are kids held accountable? Do they receive a grade for their work for, in that advisory class? No, um, they are not. We're not allowed to give grades in advisory because it's not a like a course with a course number and so forth. But they are held accountable from a discipline perspective if they don't do what they're supposed to do and that teacher has to write them up. So and then they are handled by administration in that way. And you're always going to have those that just are very defiant and they just struggle trying to follow the rules. But for the most part, I mean, everybody knows what's expected. And they have been getting on board if they didn't want to originally with teachers persevering and continually to stay very active in monitoring them, then um, it's definitely helped. Um, so I see what a couple yeah. of questions. Yeah, I try to keep track of you. Do you guys integrate with Canvas or Schoolology by chance? No, we do not. Okay. Um, and for we do have for built-in engagement, we have rewards. So once a month, we'll do a reward by grade level. So last month we had a dance party. So all students who had met their advisory time requirements. So like for freshmen and sophomores, they had to have finished both of their diagnostics. For 11th and 12th graders, they had to log a specific amount of time in their Edmentum courseware. And there's a report that's automatically generated and I would just pull that report and look at the numbers. And those students came to our commons area and they just played music, they socialized and just kind of hung out for an advisory period. And then if we had some line dances, if they wanted to get out there and line dance and work off some extra energy or whatever. Fun. <laughs> I mean, I think next month we're going to take them maybe outside and do some games. Um, we've got to get through pre-ACT next week and then we'll figure that part out. But Great. they do get monthly rewards for doing what they're supposed to do. Awesome. Your teachers use, you know, on the top bar in, um, where there's a flex assignment option where they can just take just a piece of our content and just push that out to individual students or a small group of students. Do you use um, anything like that? Do your teachers use flex assignments? Not yet? Uh, not, not at this time. Okay. That's not to say moving forward in the future, we won't slowly start adding in other pieces as well. Sure, sure. I mean, there's a lot to, to it. You use a lot already. And um, do you customize the ATC courses in courseware at all? Or are you allowing them to go through them as is? They go through as is. Okay. Now, I will say one of my goals for this year is to have each of our PLCs in our core subject areas meet and build a custom course for their course to assign mm -hmm. to the students. Nice. In but that takes time and planning. And we weren't able to do it at the beginning of this school year just for implementation purposes. We wanted to get something out to the students. Uh -huh. That was as easy as possible to do. But before the end of this school year, we will have those custom courses created for our academic subject areas. Awesome. And once you create them, you can share them with others in your school and across your district um, so that it's not just there at Harnett Central. Um, any other questions? I, I think we've answered everything that's come into chat so far. Does anybody have any other questions or desire to share any? Um, there was one other question in chat, Nicole, that said, um, do you use the beginning of the year assessment as your universal screener for the core areas? And I'm assuming that's regarding um, exact path. So mm -hmm. sort of. I mean, that is definitely something that is a work in progress, trying to figure out how to make something like that fit into the way we do business in high school. Um, we do currently have some students that are receiving tiered interventions and their exact path diagnostic data was one piece of data that we used. But because we already have so much historical data attached to a student, we don't use the exact path as the universal screener. We look at all the data pieces historically that the student has in their cumulative folder and um, kind of go from there and just use the exact path data as one piece of data for that student. 
Great idea. Other questions? Practicing hey, my- Hey, Nicole, it's John Robert. Yes, John Robert. Hey, um, Nicole, when you guys look at the exact path diagnostic results for those ninth and 10th graders, you said you identify like the bottom 10% and it's a, a, poor, uh, a combination of several data points that you guys use. Are you looking at the kids that are below grade level on that diagnostic? Are you looking at a certain score range? Like wh how are you, what's the metric that you're using on that diagnostic to identify those kind of bottom tier 10% uh, students? So there's a very large number of students like we have about 460 students in our freshman class alone. Um, there's gonna be quite a few of them that are gonna score below grade level on that diagnostic. So what we do is we look at just of everybody in the ninth grade and everybody in the 10th grade, we look at just the very bottom and see where we need to go with them. And then we can couple it with other pieces of data like um, math EOG scores or um, English EOG scores. If they have a GPA, then what is that GPA? Have they failed previous classes in high school and are repeating? Um, and do they have an attendance problem? Do they have a lot of office referrals in their history? And then we kind of select just a small group because like I said, we're still, in our implementation as well, in terms of how we implement this to the fullest extent of what like the MTSS tiers are meant for. But right now with the staffing that we have, we're only able to handle a small percentage of students for our intervention. So that's definitely an area over time where we will increase that number. Does that make sense? It's just really hard. Yep. Excuse the bells. Um, it's just really hard when you've got a lot of students who may score below grade level on the diagnostics. So you have to kind of use some other pieces of data to figure out which ones would be best served by receiving the tier two intervention. And like I said, we have a peer tutor program at this school that we utilize um, to help with those interventions. And that's, um, we have a teacher that's our peer tutor teacher and they've got peer student peer tutors assigned to them where they actually get a grade for that class. Mm -hmm. And those students um, work with our students that are receiving the interventions during our advisory time. Excellent, any other questions? We are coming up on 30 minutes. Um, we did not want to take up your full hour. Would love to give you some time back. I do wanna share a couple more things with you really quickly, and then um, we will set you free to go um, eat some lunch or whatever you need to do during this time. Can you see my screen of our upcoming webinars? Yes. Um, so we have two more webinars this week, one tomorrow, where you will hear from another one of our partners. Um, and they are going to share with us how they are um, helping fill in those gaps with EOCT, EOC and ACT prep as well. And they're actually using um, our Apex Learning courses and tutorials. So if you would like to hear another school system and how they have taken a, a similar approach to Harnett County, but um, how they put their own twist on it. And then Friday at noon, we will have um, our elementary folks um, will be joining us and we'll hear um, NTSS at the elementary level. So that's our upcoming webinars, but um, more importantly, come find us at conferences um, in North Carolina. We will be at AIM next week. We'll be there all week, including Saturday. And Saturday, you will get to hear from Durham County and their digital framework to support it, MTSS 612. Um, Cynthia Dean's gonna um, present at the AIM conference for us on Saturday um, at 11 o'clock. So if you, stay at AIM that long, please come join us. And then um, also next week in South Carolina, you will see our South Carolina team 
in at the EdTech Conference in South Carolina. Um, we also have a presentation there. Our own Emily Harrison will be putting on Get on the Right Path with Mentum's Exact Path. So if you want to know a little bit more about Exact Path that Harnett County is using, as Nicole talked about, you can um, get a sneak peek of that in South Carolina next week. And then we will also be at NC Papa um, later in November. So, um, and that's just a snippet of where we're gonna be in the next few months. We um, are definitely gonna be in a lot more places um, in the months to come, December, February, March, you'll find us all over the place. So um, that is all I have for us. Um, let me put this back up in case you want to take a picture of the QR code and you want to register if you're not already for tomorrow and Friday. Um, the, Anybody else have any other questions? CEUs, Lance, we will um, we will definitely look into getting you some CEUs on this. I will check with um, my professional development team. Okay, if everyone could, if you don't mind, maybe come off the camera so we can take a quick picture because we would like to talk uh, about this. There you go. Thank yeah. you, Sabrina. Thank you You're for remembering. Welcome. Nicole, put that other slide up, just kind of the name of the presentation that we just did today? No, the, oh, the initial. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, yeah. There we go. Okay, give me one second and then. And I'm gonna snap it too, just as a backup for Sabrina. Okay, thank you. And that way we don't, if we don't get everybody's picture, at least we'll have some. Okay. Hey, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> I can see who all is really on here. Yeah. So if you want to stop sharing for a second, Nicole, so I can just take a quick picture of the ones that have their camera on. So. Oh, yeah. I will stop sharing. Here you go. Okay. Thank you.